What's up y'all, it's your girl Sang, and today we're gonna be reacting to a video from Jen titled, Confronting Pro-Choice versus Pro-Life on Abortion. This should be pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and get into this. Is it murder? Let's kill these fetuses. Just because it's inside of you doesn't give you the right to terminate it. How about in the case of the R word? They call it the gift of life because it's- It doesn't seem like a gift in that case. You're not speaking from the Bible, you're speaking from opinion. That's your only argument? That's some weak ass shit right there. The funny thing is these questions are stupid. I asked people on both sides of the abortion debate, mm. challenged each with questions the other side may ask. Now more than ever, I thought it was important to facilitate genuine conversation. But first, here's some quick context on what happened. In 1973, the Supreme Court case of Roe versus Wade ruled on the right to abortion nationwide. But now the case has been overturned, making it a state-by-state -state issue, paving the way for likely 26 states to ban abortion. So now, let's get into it. Why do you believe in your stance? What, what happened today was victory ultimately for anyone who has a life, and that's everyone. Yeah. Finally, dude. We all really were hoping that women's rights would get taken away. Anyway. That's why you're celebrating tonight, right? Oh, yeah, dude. I'm partying. I'm just like, <laughs> I want to go full term anytime I bust. It gives the Supreme Court room to potentially overturn other things. And as a queer woman, if Obergefell was overturned, maybe I'm getting this message that I'm less than. I understand the perspective, my body, my choice. I disagree with the sentiment that an abortion is health care. This isn't a third world country. Contraception is not expensive. It's not hard to come by. If you don't want a baby, have safe sex. I actually, I 100% agree with that. Um, I know a lot of people were just like, what about, what about, um, ARP and, and incest and stuff like that? Yes, that happens. And, and I believe that falls under, I guess it depends on your state, but it should, I believe that stuff like that should fall under medical need, which abortion is still allowed under medical need. Once again, that's a state by state thing, but where I live, I think you're still allowed. They're still doing that. And I believe it should be under there. And it's also a very small percentage of abortions. The main number percentage for abortions is people taking that as the first way out instead of like your last way out, I guess. I guess that's the best way to put it. But yeah. And I know a lot of people in my life, whether like I know them through work, school, wherever. The condoms is just like non-existent to people. They don't want to wear them. They claim like there's no feeling there. It's like, you know, I get it. I get it. I really do. But you can't have one night stands with strangers and not wear a condom. Like outside of babies there's stds and it seems like nobody is afraid of anything nowadays they're just like std i'll go to the doctor baby i'll get an abortion i just feel like you need to be more like selective on who you choose to have sex with and go that route and say you are say say you and your your, your boyfriend girlfriend whatever have sex and the condom breaks and no plan B was taken, and now now you guys find out you're pregnant. I, I guess you're just pregnant. <laughs> life, life is already here. It's start making plans to be a parent. That's that's how I view it. But uh, everything else, yeah, ARP, ARP and incest, I believe that should be like, that should fall under like a medical needs because that's messed up. It's messed up. But it's also like this big of that number, so. I actually grew up very Christian, though I wouldn't do it. It should be a choice for someone else. This is America, and it's supposed to be the land of the free, but I just don't think it's free anymore. <laughs> for the people who don't understand sarcasm, what are your actual beliefs? <laughs> no one wants this. So there's two types of black people. What? <laughs> Where did that come this from? There's no issue is black or white. I want to get to the bottom of why people believe what they believe and explore the nuances within each side. So how much of your stance in this case is dictated by your religious beliefs? Very little. My parents are Christian, but it's not about religion for me. It definitely weighs in heavily. I don't believe God put that seed in that womb just to be like, ah, yeah, you can choose if you want to like let it live or not. I don't think that's our choice to make. Very blessed to have a mother and a father who to teach me from right and wrong. So I've been very responsible with myself. But what if not everyone's also blessed? 
blessed with two parent yeah, household, yeah. which is a huge advantage. Don't you think it's also kind of easy to say that if you do have a two parent house? Like I do too. When you're not in a position to accept that or not have that support, I think you have to find it elsewhere, right? There's the internet, right? So, I mean, 13 year olds are on TikTok, probably a lot of ass shaking, a lot of things of that yeah, nature. Life begins at conception. So I don't think that you can argue, oh, I'm just destroying a clump of cells. You're killing an actual baby. And just because it's inside of you doesn't give you the right to terminate it. I mean, I'm guessing you're not a virgin, right? No. Okay, <laughs> congrats. <Come on. laughs> I'm sure you've had sex before marriage, right? Yes, Isn't that kind of going against your religious beliefs as well? Of course, bro, but the thing is, isn't that a little bit like picking and choosing though? So, I mean, everyone's a sinner. Everyone's gonna make mistakes and no one sin is greater than another. It is a sin that I'm not super proud about, but you know, life happens, you gotta keep going. I think there's a clear line. He is correct. No sin is greater than another in the eyes of God. And that's kind of crazy to think of as humans because you're just like, no, I feel like murder would really outweigh having sex before marriage, but this is what it is if you're religious, you know? I am between eggs, fertilization, and life. Those idiots jerking off in the room, that's not life, man. They're not creating nothing in there. Sex is not meant to be for fun. Like, sex is for reproduction. So then, what do the pro-choicers think? When does a person become a person? I think the heart starts beating at six weeks. I would say after birth. Um, when they come out of the womb. When they breathe air. As soon as you the reading on the stick says pregnant, then that's life. Uh, now they got two kids, like my position has shifted a little bit. 15 years ago, so I would have just gone along with the, the viability standard. Another thing that gets lost is that people that are against abortions talk about it. They trivialize the decision a lot, where they try to demonize the person getting their abortion. That's not a decision that anyone would take lightly. Dude, uh, you're asking the dumbest motherfucker alive about something. Well, I'm gonna have a hot take. You're like. Actually, at six to twelve weeks, suggest it. No, you just won't. There was a study done um, due to like what we can hear medically. So far, we can actually hear a heartbeat at like the four week marker, and that's like the earliest we can hear it with the technology we have. Now, that doesn't mean there's not a heartbeat before that. That's just what we can hear. But one can assume if you can hear a heartbeat at four weeks, the heartbeat's probably just there from jump, right? Where the one guy, where he's at the viability thing, where he said 23 to 24 weeks, it's a long time. Like, you done already formed, and it's just, you, yeah, you're, you're killing a person. That's really all it is. You're just killing a person. Um, also, if you guys didn't know, there's actually abortion clinics that do um, long-term abortion. And we're talking about when the woman is at, like, eight months eight and a half months, pretty much ready to pop and they'll do the abortion, which is wild. Cause like you're, you're formed, like it's, you're getting ready to come out the oven at that point. And they, they're just like, yeah, you don't want it. We'll take it out. That's, that's crazy. Women to have rights over their bodies. And that's it. But should there be a cutoff on when it's too late? I don't know. It's it's hard. How about if it's like literally like a week before? At that point, just put the kid up for adoption. If their doctor thinks it's safe enough to perform an abortion, then that's... How about after it's born? No. But as soon as it starts resembling a person, I think it wouldn't be so easy anymore. So with all these different opinions on life, I wanted to ask, is it murder? It's definitely killing life. Do you think that's yeah. morally right? It's wrong to do so, and it's wrong to like make a law about it. Okay, so you're saying it's morally wrong to yeah. do abortion, but you support it. Yes. So now let's switch it back to the pro-lifers. Shouldn't it be the individual's choice? What do you think about women's rights and their freedom to choose what they want to do with their body? This isn't a debate about women's rights. This is a debate about a fetus's rights. They're saying it's selfish towards them, but it's really selfish towards the life that could possibly be. And at this point, there's some viewers probably thinking, why are you even asking men? What do you think about people when they say that men shouldn't talk about this issue? Okay, well, I mean, maybe that's like the single dad. I mean, that, maybe I could have said that if you caught me Friday night 15 years ago, right? I mean, everyone's born with a father and mother, so yeah. you should consider it. And so... Yeah, I never really liked that argument where people be like, why do men care about it? It's like, well, they have half a say in what just happened. <laughs> like, takes two to tango, you know what I'm saying? You didn't make that kid by yourself. Um, also, I think that's just also a BS thing because when there's women on the pro-life side of things, they, they still get mad. Like, as a woman, you could be like, oh, I, I believe that we should save the fetus and... Uh, no abortion, blah, blah, blah. They'll come down on you so hard. They'll call you every name in the book. Should fathers have equal say in whether a woman should get an abortion or not? 
Yes. No. But in this case, isn't it, you need both to create a baby, right? Yeah, but the man's body isn't affected at all. And yeah, but you chose to sleep with him. If you didn't want him as a daddy, you shouldn't have slept with him. So I don't think that they should have equal say into what is happening with another person's body. I'm terrified of giving birth. The biological father maybe shouldn't have a stance. I mean, right? I don't know. Yeah. If I was just a guy who's like, dude, I fucking came in you. And you know what? I got a lot to say about it. Get out of here. That's not the way I do it. All of this really comes down to personal responsibility. Maybe don't sleep with somebody you don't know. Cause stuff, stuff like this is gonna happen. You, like you, you succumb to lust. That's really what this is. You succumb to lust. You have a night of fun, and now it's like, oh man, I can't believe we're about to have this kid. And, mm, let me get rid of it. That's why you're just like, no, they shouldn't have a say. Because if a one night stand had a say and was like, no, I think we should raise this baby. You don't know this person, so you're just like, nah, I'm not about to go all through all of this for a one night stand. If you were married. If you were married to this person before deciding to do this, this wouldn't even be a conversation, honestly. You'd be like, of course I want to have this child with my husband. Why wouldn't I? We've already talked about kids. To have my gun on me and I will shoot anyone, <laughs> including school children. So you do like murder a lot, huh? I love yeah. <laughs> Dude, consistent. Different this perspectives guy, equate to jokes. different opinions, but what doesn't make sense are the inconsistencies on both sides. Did you support strongly recommended vaccination? If I choose not to have a baby, who else am I affecting? For someone who's pro-life, the life that got killed. Okay, I mean, I think this is a, a fair point. I chose not to choose the vaccine, and it cost me kind of like my job. The same thing with abortion in a sense, right? If you choose not to get vaxxed, you're affecting multiple people around. Does that change it anything? feels selfish in a way, right? Okay. Obviously, it's a huge generalization, but usually those who supported the mandate are now protesting for my body, my choice, while the other side was arguing for my body, my choice on the mandate until it was about this issue on abortion. <laughs> Yeah, that's two different things though, my guy. Like, we're talking about uh, putting an unknown shot in my body, which, it, you know how many years it takes to make a vaccine? They kind of just made this like on the spot and was like, all right, y'all, it's safe to take, we promise. You, you don't know that. It wasn't tested on enough people to know that. And it wasn't created long enough to know that. Versus a baby. A baby, we know how that works. <laughs> we know how all that works. This, this really ain't the same thing. I got what you were trying to do, but it's not really the same thing. So now let's take it up a notch to really understand their beliefs. How about in the case of, let's say, the R word? You gotta make exceptions for exceptional circumstances. That's your only argument. That's some weak ass shit right there. They call it the gift of life because it's- It doesn't seem like a gift in that case. Right, you're right. When there's life, there's potential for good. You're a child of a ah. mother, but then you have an opportunity to go out and make a difference and say, hey, I became X and Y and Z and gave their all in everything in life. I think that we as a society would be better. So give me the pain, give me the suffering. Let's power through it. And let's become better and harder and callous individuals because of it. What you about to say? <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. But are we putting the focus? Like I said, I, I think that should fall under medical exemption because when you get arped, that is like, first off, not only did you not ask for anything to happen to your body, right? You didn't ask for none of that. Uh, there's a lot of mental trauma that goes along with that. And don't get me wrong, there's ARP victims that did keep their child and they went through it. Not everybody is mentally built for that. So the reason I would put that under a medical exemption, because if you're mentally not sound from that happening, which I'm not saying you would be, but there's women where like, you're not gonna handle it the same. I mean, you might harm yourself a lot during the pregnancy just to not have the baby, or if the baby comes, you might start harming the baby because you didn't want it because of that incident you didn't ask for. That's serious, because you might as well end it from jump, you know what I'm saying, if, instead of going through with, with it all. That's why I would put that under a medical exemption, but yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, 
That's a tough one. It's on the wrong thing. Do you think that adoption should be prioritized more than abortion? America has not fixed our foster adoption system. Many children that are in abusive homes. I'm adopted. I was adopted at four days old. Adoption's a much better route. I want less people. Why do you want less people? Oh, then the freeway opens up. Okay. Let's kill these fetuses. What if they could? That man was just drunk cracking jokes. Uh, the adoption argument. Uh, America's adoption system is pretty trash. I remember when I was in sixth grade, there was this girl in my class where her family literally was just foster parents because you get that extra government check. And she like was happily telling us in class. It was like, because I forgot how many brothers and sisters she, she said she had. And then it was like, well, they're not really my brothers and sisters. And you're like, what do you mean? parents are foster parents but they do it because like we get this big check every month so pfft, it ain't really a big deal they only here for a little while and they gone and i was like oh well hmm okay so <laughs> i you gotta look at it like that there's people that do do that they'll take that check treat the kids horribly there have been kids that have been molested in that system beaten it's it's not good it's uh I also don't understand the, the parameters for adoption because they make it seem like you have to go through so much to adopt kids, yet so many kids end up in like crap situations that are like foster homes. So I don't like, is it just like, is it dependent on who the adoption agent is? Like, does each person just be like, oh, I think this would be a good home. And one person's just like, well, it's a roof. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> I guess you got a kid now. It's, well, I feel like the requirements aren't properly followed on like all ends of the spectrum there. That needs to get fixed and cleaned up. Once it is fixed, then maybe that could be also a better option if you don't want the kid. Could, what would they say about each other? Have an open mind and don't be that pro-life person that says, oh, you're gonna go to hell. You're not speaking from the Bible, you're speaking from opinion. You know damn well the red. Ah, uh, I mean, that's not opinion, that's the Bible says it's they're they're very big on what sins you should not do in the bible I'm just saying it's just to sacrifice a life because of your poor judgment making is unacceptable i definitely get it's like okay that's a person but your shit ends when it's like all right well i'm gonna tell you what to do with your own body because there's 66 i think million abortions that have been since the 1960s so you're gonna sit here and tell me i have 60 million brothers and sisters that I'm supposed to be hanging out with right now and make memories with and they're not here. It's sad and it gets me emotional, man. That's like there's there's Thank you so much to my brothers and sisters. Also for the um, for the black community, y'all know they really created that to um deflate our numbers. Y'all realize that, right? Now because of feminism and stuff, um white women ran with that. So <laughs> you know, they ruin their plans on uh, diminishing our numbers but at, at the same time because so many um fetuses are aborted a large number of that did did come from the black community so just imagine how many more of us there would actually be if that that didn't happen you know just, we we would really be taking over stuff and, and running the world right now <laughs> sisters for watching so far <laughs> sorry sorry no matter what side you're on, beware of the person who masquerades closed-mindedness as acceptance, which is exactly what I experienced with the protest. I'll get to why she's blurred out, but during the interview, she mentioned how the other side needs to have more empathy for her side, and I challenged her that it actually goes both ways. But then she proceeded to argue that she doesn't need to show empathy for them, and essentially calling them idiots. Then another protester saw the interview and started confronting me asking why I was challenging her and why I wasn't showing my support with a sign. One thing led to another, and the protester and the girl that I was interviewing started yelling at each other and arguing. So I decided to leave and a few minutes later, I get this DM. Do not use a single piece of that footage you took of me. I don't consent to you using it anymore. Made me look like a f***ing fool, then run away like a pussy. Bet, delete it. Got us. Yeah, that sounds about right. All of that sounds pretty accurate. So those are some harsh words from an empath. Holding a sign or posting an Instagram story doesn't make you open-minded. <laughs> said harsh words from an MFAB, yo. And neither does just talking to people you agree with. Vilifying the opposition is a lazy cop-out to avoid conversation and critical thought. And if empathy no longer means considering others' experiences, maybe the last thing our country needs is more empaths. Facts, my man, facts. I like that video a lot. I think he did a very good job 
on showing both sides. The only thing I wonder, maybe it's just because of the area or where he was at, there was not one female on the pro-life side of things. Like, you had men and women on the pro-choice side, but it just seemed like it was all men on the pro-life side. So I, I just wonder, like, I don't know where he filmed that at. It just makes me wonder, like, if he just couldn't find one. It also seemed late at night, too, so. But... With that being said, if you guys want me to react to more videos like that one, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you never miss when I drop a video. I try to drop two to three every single day, but you know, sometimes life gets in the way and I can't do that. But the only way for you guys to figure that out is when I drop updates on my social media and the links to that is in the description box down below. So make sure to follow me over there. And with that being said, until next time, you already know who it is. It's saying. <laughs>